Hi, DeCross here. Today, I'm going to show how we can replace this old 1990s vintage intercom system with something sleek and modern that we can use as a smart hub to control the smart devices in our home. Let's get started. So before we start, be sure to identify which breaker will supply the power to your new power supply that formerly fed the, um, the old intercom system. And uh, I've actually marked it uh, to, to, so I know which one is actually for the 12 volt power supply. And of course the breaker is off. So this is a little ways into the process uh, and I'm going to back up a little bit and try and recap uh, what I've done so far. So the first step, of course, was removing the old box and uh, just unwiring all the, the door and window sensors uh, from it. And uh, of course, we also had a 110 power uh, supply, which went to a 24 volt AC transformer to power the original box. But that's good because we can make use of the original uh, power to power our new 12 volt power supply. So what I've done here is I've installed a couple of two by four sections here and here. And these just screw directly into the original wall studs, uh, which are going to be behind the finished sheetrock. Uh, there's plenty of room. So by installing these, uh, you have to cut them and mount them so that the, the the two by four is exactly plush with the front of the drywall. So that's going to uh, carry the new uh, wall mount plate. Uh, this piece I put on the bottom, it's a little spacer piece. It's not really necessary, but I was able to fabricate that quite simply in my table saw. And it just means that the mount will actually sit uh, predominantly on this ledge, uh, but it doesn't really matter. You can screw it directly to the two by fours and it will be supported uh, just as well. So let's take a look at the, the wiring. So from each of the wall stations, the remote stations, there's a four wire connection. In this case, uh, it's an MNS sound system. Some of your uh, systems might actually have six wires. It doesn't really matter. You only really need two, but since we have four, I made use of them. And what I decided to do was to join the red and the white together for the positive and the green and the black together for the negative. That just allows uh, a little less voltage drop across the, the length of the line. However, we're not talking about huge current. Um, we're going to connect these to echo dots, uh, which have a spec rating of about one and a quarter amps. However, in real world usage, they probably draw less than half an amp. So we've got lots of current ca uh, carrying capability there. Uh, so the next step would be to wire up the power supply uh, with the intercom wires as uh, we just described. So here's the next stage of progress completed. I've installed a 12 volt power supply and I think I mentioned that in my case uh, this is actually going to provide a power distribution to uh, what were the former uh, wall intercom stations. Uh, they're now going to be replaced by echo dots and we're using the former intercom audio wiring to use as a power conduit for those. So what I've done is I've wired up this uh, power supply available on Amazon. This is actually a 12 and a half amp uh, power supply, which is more than enough overhead for what I'm driving. Uh, we're going to have uh, five Echo Dot uh, remote locations. And again, those are rated at uh, one and a quarter amps each, which is only just over six amps at max current. Uh, and even that's generous because they'll never run it at that full spec, but that is the specification for them. So we have about 50% overhead on this power supply at 12 and a half amps. So 
I wired as I described in the previous uh, section, which was I grouped all the reds and all the whites and all the blacks and all the greens uh, from each of the stations together. And uh, this power supply actually has two outputs, so I didn't actually have to join the reds and whites together. I just put the reds in one of the white uh, in one of the positive terminals, the whites in the other, and then the same for the black and the green on the negative. Uh, this small pigtail that's uh, coming off that is going to actually supply our uh, 12 volt to 5 volt uh, converter for the tablet power supply. Now. In this case, as I say, I used a power supply because I'm uh, using it for uh, to power the other devices as well. Uh, Makes by Mike actually also sells a 110 to 5 volt uh, converter directly. And if that was the case, if you wanted to use that, you would not have to install a power supply. You would simply connect it up to the AC wiring. Um, so I replaced the old uh, metal box with the transformer with a nice plastic work box and uh, have connected the AC for the 12 volt supply up to that. So this is the wall mount kit uh, to mount the Fire HD tablet into the wall. And uh, I worked with Mike Bagala of MB Mounts, makes by Mike, uh, on this custom piece uh, to fill our oversized hole. Uh, he makes a nice uh, uh, kit. He has two options. One is a surface mount kit and one is a flush mount kit. Um, this is the flush mount kit and it's customized by making it extra wide. Uh, the hole that was left behind was about 16 inches wide. So I had him uh, create uh, the, the mounting plate to be about 16 and a half to give us good overlap on the, um, on over the edges, the raw edges of the drywall. This meant we did not have to do any drywall repairs and everything will look clean and tidy when it's done. So this is the, the part that actually physically mounts to the wall. This is the, the surface fascia. It's actually acrylic and it's currently still covered with uh, protective uh, backing paper. Uh, we'll take that off as a final step. And our tablet, of course, and he supplied a template, which is not actually necessary in this case, since we're not cutting out drywall, uh, as you would normal with a standard mount, we're gonna be mounting this directly to those two by four studs that we installed. Uh, as mentioned, I selected the five volt option and here you can see a, a 12 volt to 5 volt uh, converter that comes with the kit. Uh, alternatively, if you didn't have the power supply, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you could select a 110 uh, power supply to work directly. So now we're finally ready to put the mount on the wall. And uh, so you can see I got the cover back on the AC connection box and we've hooked up the 12 volts uh, supply to its own uh, little uh, box with the 5 volt power supply inside and we've hooked that up to the power connector for the tablet. So let's put it on the wall. So the next thing we want to do is put one screw in and then we can pivot around that screw and we want to set it up so that it's exactly level. Good tip is to also, if you have any artwork or anything close by or another switch plate, it's a good idea to ensure that those are level because visually it can throw you off into thinking it's not square even though your level's telling you it is. Anyway, we've put one screw in and now we're ready to go ahead and put the rest of the screws in. Okay, so now the back part of the mount is completed and you can see I have six screws in there. There's actually uh, 10 provided, but uh, even six I think is overkill. So we have two in the bottom and two in each side. So all that remains now is to hook up the tablet.
to the new 5 volt pigtail and snap it in. I have to say when I first saw the mount I thought well how's the tablet going to stay in place but Mike has done actually a really nice job of tolerances and you can see it goes in there quite tightly and uh, doesn't require any other adhesion. And now the final part is the front fascia bezel. And I'm just going to leave the paper on for another minute just to see how everything lines up. And you can see that snaps on there really nicely. Okay, so let's take the paper off and uh, we'll see the finished product. And here's the finished install. I must say the mounts by Mike mount is absolutely beautiful. It's very, very slim. You can see it barely sticks out from the wall and it completely hides all of the old work plaster uh, drywall edges that we had. Uh, so um, it's also operating off of the power supply now. Uh, so that will be permanently wired up. And for full operation, uh, I'm installing uh, the fully kiosk browser uh, to give us a, a good functioning uh, smart control system. But for now, the main thing is it's in the wall and functioning and uh, looks absolutely spectacular, I think. Uh, the next uh, stage of the process will be showing how we wire up the, uh, the room stations for the Echo Dots. And I'll do that in a separate video. Hope that was helpful. Uh, enjoy. I'll leave links for the products down below.